this is what the homework is all about. If I talk about a planner, I need one for myself. Let me make sure I have one. In a planner, you start doing the hard task work. You look at your big idea, right? And answer these questions and write them down because this is what's going to help you take your best thinking. Thank you. You're going to take your best thinking and put it into a presentation. So the intent, you have to be able to say. You want, your, you want an audience to do, say, or think something. Be specific. I want the judges to signify their agreement to our suggestion. How? What are you going to do? Are you going to ask them? Are you going to tell them directly? How are you going to do this? If you don't have your intent articulated here, it's not going to work. And let me tell you, this happens all the time in businesses. What you call that foot in the door, what do I really want from them this time? Do I want them to agree to a long-term strategy? Do I want them to agree to the first immediate response? Audience, we've talked about this before. What do I know about them? How can I frame it? That makes it easy for them to understand. And message, what's your main message? What's your takeaway? That's what's going to be said four times. Then you structure your content. If you start jumping into your content immediately with all of that, they're not going to pick it up. You've got to frame it in a way that just makes it so easy. We had, I think, less than two minutes between one presentation and the next presentation. Do you know what that's like? Your brain is all jumbled with facts and emotion from the previous presentation. You need to reformat my brain so that I can accept what you're going to say. And I'm going to remember it, and not just the last person. The last, what are your main supporting points? How will you make your conclusion memorable? This is something people keep forgetting. They just put the question mark on, or they repeat what they said. Worse, they lose steam at the end. You've got to keep the momentum going. It's only 15 minutes. For God's sakes, you can do this, right? 15 minutes, you can say it interested. I've been talking to you for almost an hour now. I'm still excited about what you're going to say. I want to hear more. Stay engaged. And stay engaged with your other team members. It's not just about you when you talk. So if I had four or five people, did you mind standing up here, the four of you? Just stand up here, you don't have to be a team. But just, just for the purposes of example. Where's my clicker? I lost my clicker. Does anybody have my clicker? Did I hand it to someone? What? Where? Oh, I think I see it on the next to the water bottle. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, we're, we're doing Q&A, and here they are standing. Don't they look attractive? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unfold your arms. No spaghetti legs. Get yourself square and tall, and look like you can't wait to hear every question that's going to be asked of you, right? So, you stand up, you're going to answer a question, blah, 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 blah. What are the three of you going to do? You're going to look at her and look interested and make sure that the audience gets the impression that she knows what she's talking about. You're not going to do what I see happen all the time. <laughs> right? You don't want to send any negative view to the audience or the judges that you're not on the same page. And the last thing you want to do is, I'm going to ask you to do it, step in front. And you're going to say, well, what she was really trying to say is... Well, what she was really trying to say is... Why aren't you going to do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And I've seen people do that and it's horrible. You want to look like a team and people want to see you as a team. They don't want one star. So I don't want you answering all the questions. Even if you know all the answers, you want to pass it out to the other people. Michelle, go. Yeah, so one tip we have for this is like, make sure you guys figure out some kind of cues um, that you guys can like, pick up on super quickly. Something small, like a like, bigger, like, like a small wave or something. So if someone has something to add at the end of someone else's answer, it's not super awkward when you like cut in and they still have something, something to say, or like, oh, uh, uh, no, uh, no, you take it. Oh, uh, this is what one of, I learned this from one of my students. They, had, they were sitting at a table, and what they did was when someone wanted to answer something, they folded their hands. And it was just a subtle cue that, so just do that. So now, no, do it more like this. Yeah, so now I know she's changed her posture, and you can feel if someone's changed your, you can feel that without even looking at her, right? You can feel that someone wants to do something. All right, now you can come up with any signals you want, right? You can take one step forward, and then you get, let's say you're talking, 
blah 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 blah. And then I'm like looking at you, and you can, yeah, you can acknowledge me and let me come in and say something. But here's the other part. Usually the person that's adding on will say something like, may I add on? I'll ask permission, not the undermining. If I can add on to what she said, she forgot these last three things that are really important, right? You don't want to do that? And you don't want to give more than what the previous person said. So if you're going to add on, add on, and then end it. Go to the next question. If everybody starts adding on, what does it make it look like? Right, the first person didn't have the answer, right? So we have to all rescue her because she really is the dummy in the team. <laughs> Thank you very much for being up here. Yes. Um, yes. Very much. Would, would it be better for the person one to acknowledge person two or person two to ask permission? Or it's a few more natural person one, uh, and so and so would like to add on or what would see more? Or it's more natural to turn if you're number two, turn around and say if I may add on. Right? That's more natural. But you could also say, Jeffrey, what I said before, you know, I've done this section of it. Jeffrey's done a lot of research. I think, Jeffrey, do you want to <coughs> tell them about, and I'll say, do you want to tell them about the research you did two years ago? I think that would be really valid. People love, judges love to see you looking like a team. It gets them all excited. All right? Um, so please do the planner. Please focus on the must-know information. Um, and I strongly recommend that you have this conversation with your team. And lastly, the storyboard. The storyboard is going to project your logic, how you go from one to the other, who is going to go in which order, and as you practice your presentation, you should mix it up and see who can handle which subject more. So I've given you a storyboard. You can follow it through. I use this with executives all the time. They love it because it forces you to think story, not presentation. Okay? And so you have a blank one you can, you can work with. The last thing I wanted to say, and we've been saying a little bit about this, pathos, logos, and ethos. You can't just sell it with logical order and being comprehensive. You really have to look at your body, your eyes, your voice, your nerves, and your team dynamic. And team dynamic is probably the most important that you look like a team. Your body is not going to be up there casually. You're going to be erect. You're going to be very, very firm in your stance. You're going to work through your transitions. You're not going to be clumsy with them. Your voice is going to be confident. If you have nerves, I'll give you a few quick hints. Number one for nerves, breathe. You breathe, you're fine. Breathe three times. I've had medical students tell me no matter what prescriptions we give, breathing is the first thing we recommend. If you get nauseous, there's a wonderful little pulse point here. You just massage it. Nobody will see you doing it. And within a short period of time, it affects your vagus nerve, which is the largest nerve in your body that goes to your stomach. Okay? So that's my big tip. That's the $150 tip. Um, but it's the team dynamic I want you to focus on. Okay? And here are my seven points of worry. If I want to see you all win, and I am putting up an award for one of the finalists. We're going to announce that yet, have you? Uh, oh, you didn't hear it from me. Um, here are the seven points of worry that I would give. I wanted to call them the seven deadly sins, but then I thought, nah, that's not, that's not really helpful. An opening that didn't preview the solution. You went the academic route. Closing lost momentum when we're done now. Uh, too many details for the time allotment. I would actually make that number one. You try to tell me everything. You know, I jumped on you a little bit. I hope you're okay. When you give me too much information, I can't process it. You have to be reasonable. And no passion for the solution. We're definitely going to prevent war in the South China Sea if we do this. And I think you'll agree with me, right? Unrealistic recommendations that are way too big. No connection to the team, and slides were text dense, complicated, and not explained. That is another one that's just going to throw people off. If you have too much information on your slide, which makes it look like it belongs in a book and not in a presentation, you're going to drive people nuts because they're just going to look at the slide and they're going to stop listening to you. So, any last questions? And I have a few slides for you on slides. Why? Might you be worried? Is there anything I haven't answered right now? This is kind of big picture at this stage. 
after Michelle told you you're all brilliant? Jeffrey. Uh, what if one person forgets their line? Forgets? Yeah, just stops. That, well, the first thing is don't memorize. You're in a conversation. If you're in a conversation, right, you don't forget if you look to someone. If you go blank and you're in a QA, and a I've already said what you can do, you go blank. You stop and be human. Stop and be human. Say, wait a minute, I need a minute. Nothing wrong with that. It shows your credibility, okay? If you really panic and freeze, your whole team should be prepared to give the entire presentation. Every single member of the team should be, so that somebody can step in for you and you do it the same way I mentioned before. You say, if I may step in, is that okay? And you say, yes, thank God. You go in there, and then you take over their part. You don't have to say everything of their part. You just say what you need to to make the transition, and usually the other person will say at some point they want to come back in, or they'll come back into the Q&A. But don't draw attention to it like, God, I forgot my point, what am I going to do, don't have it written on your hand, none of this, right? This is a, a conversation. Thank you for the question. Any other burning questions? Yes, sir. How does one signal uh, when they're going to answer a question uh, for the rest of the group? Like if a judge asks a question, how does one... Well, you should each pick what your area of expertise is. So if you've anticipated, it's on the planner, you anticipate questions saying, I'm going to take the technology questions, I'm going to take the financial questions, I'm going to take these questions. So you will already know when, you do, when you're doing your rehearsal, that's the person that's going to take it. And your team will be organized enough to turn around and say, you're going to take it. They're going to know that you're going to take it. Good question. Michelle. Yeah, so judges are allowed to interrupt the presentation at the time of the Yeah, that's something that the you should have a lead for each one of the judges. I know when I was there, I would like stop them and say, "Hey, let them get through." But I think the the best thing to do is if you preview your entire presentation, it makes it very easy to say, "With all these questions, I have two more. We have three issues. If I could have your permission for one minute to get through the other two issues, I think it all will become clearer." And usually, a judge will say, "Oh, okay, sure, fine." Any other burning questions? Yes. A comment on what Jeffrey said. Suppose one team member gaffes or says something stupid or just makes a makes some mistake in the delivery. How how should how should we best recover from such a like a, like like like, 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 like by acting, not intentional obviously. Like okay, so first off, let me just say this: Don't judge your team members. <laughs> okay, the team member made a mistake. Yeah. Right. If it's a major mistake, like they said, three billion instead of three thousand, you may just step in quickly and say, "Oh, if I if I may, it's actually three thousand. And then the other person should say, "Oh, thank you very much." Right. But you got to get out of the mindset, it's very much what I tried to demonstrate with you, it, that, oh, that team member has said something really stupid because your face is probably going to react and show that. Okay? And I see that so many times that it takes away from the team dynamic. So you want to be very careful of that. The shrewd, nuanced way of handling it is waiting, and it'll usually come up in Q&A. Or a judge may interrupt you. And then if they interrupt you, it gives you a personal, personal time to correct. You don't say your team member was wrong. You turn around and said, I think there was a misstatement that in the slide we had five billion or four billion, you know, clarify it. Okay. Okay? Thank you. And if they go completely in the wrong direction, then you kill them later, but not when they're on front. Okay? okay. Any other quick questions? The quicker you answer the question, the more time you have to get more questions, and that's usually how you sell it. So Good luck, enjoy the experience. I'm around, Jeffrey's around, he always feeds questions to me. I wish you all great luck. I think this is, an, as I said before, and I said it at the beginning, this is an important event for NYU and for the world. Um, and then, I'm gonna just give you this. Well, Mike. A few slides, okay, <laughs> to think about what do you want to do. So I'm very interested in whale migration since I got went into one of those boats and saw the whale. You do not do slides like this. This is my last do not. 
You do not do slides like this. It doesn't tell me. There's no message here. You don't do slides like this because it's not getting me to where I want to go. Before Whaley, the 30, remember our history of the world, or 1776. I'm going to have a picture of George Washington, and I'm going to have the little Vermont mountain man fighting the revolution, and that. No, we don't need that. You're not going to give me all the data, but you might want to have these data in the, at backup slides. And if you have them in backup slides and someone asks the question, you can look so smart to say, you know what? We looked at exactly that same question, and I, if I may, I have that data. And you have someone go over to the podium, right? And they don't do this, right? They go directly to the slide you want them to go to, and you do that by turning off the, the slide projector, have them bring up the slide, and then you go to it, right? It makes you look so smart. They love when you do that. Because then, guess what? The questioner feels smart, too. I asked a smart question. <laughs> you want them to feel smart. They don't want to feel stupid. So this is what you want. You want a lot of visual. That's my big idea. Where are they going? My entire topic is about whale migration. And where they're in the issues, where they're mating, where they're not mating, and what's the impact. What we want to know, where are they going? So that gives them a reason to listen. And it's not, you know, don't you feel? Isn't there some emotion there? Don't be afraid to open powerfully, okay? Don't get cute, but just don't be afraid to open powerfully. It's been wonderful to be in front of you. I wish you good luck. Um, I can't wait to see who wins. Go for it, knock them dead. Break a leg. All right.